my research area covers uh, arch precision machining, uh, micro machining, and uh, nano uh, manufacturing. So today's my lecture uh, will fo be focused on uh, the nano manufacturing uh, area. Uh, I'm firstly I'm going to uh, introduce the motivation uh, to uh, <coughs> fabrication of nano structures, and then I will focus on the two uh, approach uh, we developed. One is the deterministic uh, focus and beam uh, machining approach. Another is uh, a fabrication approach for freestanding uh, uh, 3D nanostructures and then give uh, some concluding uh, remarks in the end. Um, nano manufacturing is uh, one of my, res uh, my interested research area. Uh, basically, it's uh, used to uh, uh, fabricate uh, uh, products uh, or components with functional feature uh, or at least one dimension in the order of uh, a nanometer level. Uh, so uh, because this uh, kind of uh, nano uh, features can achieve uh, some amazing uh, uh, performance, for example, uh, the plas uh, plasmonic, uh, it is uh, uh, to generate monic nanostructure is to generate uh, uh, res uh, resonant uh, uh, resonant uh, interactions uh, between the uh, surface uh, charge uh, <coughs> oscillation and uh, uh, and also uh, the electro uh, magnetic field of the light uh, by utilizing these uh, nanostructures we could achieve. Uh, we, we could uh, break uh, the RB diffraction limits to achieve a super high uh, resolution for uh, bio imaging. Uh, another application is to uh, enhance the uh, light of absorption rate uh, if we introduce those uh, plasmonic structures in solar cell. Uh, another application for some unknown structures would be in the uh, high for high density data storage. Uh, Seagate has uh, using this uh, using nanostructures to enhance you know gigabit uh, you know uh, hard disk. Um, there are many approach uh, to generate uh, uh, these uh, nanostructures. Uh, I used one of them, uh, uh, which is a focus and beam approach, because this approach is able to generate. Uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, nanostructures uh, um, is uh, very good for a uh, rapid prototype and uh, to uh, in, uh, to, in, uh, to uh, make uh, uh, the invention uh, realized uh, in laboratory stage. But uh, in this uh, research, I just uh, demonstrated uh, we, how we, my research researcher uh, in my group has uh, advanced this technology to enhance uh, the fabrication uh, accuracy and then also to scale it up uh, for uh, producing uh, structures in, in uh, millimeter scales because the focus and beam usually uh, take place in uh, micrometer uh, you know, uh, scales. So uh, focus and beam is a established technique it basically using an arm, a high energy arm to bombard the substrate surface to generate uh, uh, to remove materials uh, in, in which is uh, item by item to generate uh, nanostructures. But uh, there are three uh, fundamental uh, limitations for this approach to, uh, <coughs> to restrict it to achieve extremely high in, uh, you know, uh, accuracy during uh, the fabrication approach. One is uh, the uh, so-called angular dependence of the sputter yield. The definition of sputter yield is uh, uh, the numbers of uh, items uh, knocked out from the substrate surface per incident arm. Uh, this uh, sputter yield varies uh, uh, with the uh, <coughs> incident angles as you see from the uh, simulation and experimental results, see when is the incident angle near uh, 80 degree, it's uh, reached to the higher point. Another uh, limitation for IMB machining is the iron uh, redeposition. Uh, 
uh, if the structure is quite complex, if you it's just incident one eye, so there the uh, knocked out item may attach to the other side uh, of the structures. This is called a, a reposition effect. Uh, so obviously this will affect the form accuracy of the fabricated nanostructure. Another, uh, another uh, limitation associated with uh, the, Gaussian, uh, the Gaussian beam of the IM. Um, due to the Gaussian distribution beams, uh, in order to get a smooth surface, the uh, space between uh, each beam uh, have to be uh, less than the uh, size of the, you know, uh, the IFIB beam. Uh, but this will cause some uh, overlap effect, which is because there are some overlap of some you know uh, adjacent eye. So basically, for uh, one surfaces, it will have you know uh, more contribution uh, from the eye uh, from adjacent uh, you know eye beam. So this will cause the uh, uh, overcut. So uh, these are the three uh, main, uh, major effect for. Uh, <coughs> IFIB fabric uh, for influencing the attainable uh, form accuracy of IFIB machining. Uh, my researcher has developed a, a deterministic uh, a three dimensional IFIB uh, approach, uh, which can be illustrated by uh, these two uh, diagrams. We, we develop a divergence compensation approach. So, this approach means uh, uh, we start with uh, our, uh, you know, uh, designed uh, geometries. Uh, we hope to 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 achieve uh, by uh, IFIB mach uh, machining, uh, but because of uh, IM beam overlap effect and angular dependence of spark yield, as I just explained, we won't be able to achieve the same geometric as we designed. But we could uh, adjust the fabrication parameter to uh, over content this effect so we can choose the uh, desired dimension. So this is the philosophy for the first approach. For the second approach is more on prediction. So basically, if we had uh, determined the fabrication approach, uh, fabrication parameter, uh, we, if we would uh, develop a model to consider all these three influential factors to predict the geometry. And so this will help the designer uh, to uh, design, uh, design the suitable geometries, you know, uh, which uh, take into consideration of the FIB fabrication uh, limitations. So uh, I just using this block diagram to explain the divergent compensation approach. <clears throat> so we start with some design geometry and uh, also substrate material property. Uh, these will be the input and to uh, you know uh, the CAD file to uh, generate uh, the uh, fabricated patterns. And to overcome the effect of sputter yield, we use uh, we can use Monte Carlo simulation to simulate the spot variations of spot yield uh, in relation with the uh, uh, incident uh, uh, angle. Uh, and uh, also, uh, with the input of the CAD, uh, we could uh, 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 guide the spot you know, distributions through a uh, uh, depth control algorithm, which uh, I will explain in my next slides. We could uh, uh, determine the machining uh, so the fabrication parameters which counterbalance the uh, <coughs> counterbalance the overlap of the beam skirt uh, beam skirt effect and and then using this uh, fabrication parameter which has been which optimized to uh, to driven the to drive uh, to drive the uh, stream file generator and to fabricate uh, the uh, nanostructure with the design, uh, uh, with design the geometry. So uh, this is a depth control approach. Uh, the fabricated uh, surface uh, can be 
represented uh, by a numbers of you know uh, mesh, which has uh, evenly uh, distributed uh, distance. Uh, with the input uh, parameter, we could uh, uh, we could you know uh, calculate the real you know, mating depths under the uh, current ion flux density, uh, considering the uh, variations of uh, ion incident angle. Uh, once we calculate the uh, real depth, we could uh, uh, we could uh, you know uh, using this you know this formula to calculate the dwell time to just uh, uh, the dwell time you know to over uh, balance, overcome uh, the overlap effect. So this is uh, the first approach. The second approach is to simulate the three-dimensional structures generated by FIB. Uh, so uh, basically, the surface uh, we regarded it as uh, each individual node. The three topography actually is the generation process is a kind of evolution process uh, of uh, each individual or not uh, uh, with the time during the ion beam bombardment. We consider the, uh, the redeposition uh, effect and uh, I, the variations of uh, sputter yield for a uh, different incident angle. We, uh, so this is the uh, surface topography model. Uh, in the a core part of this model, which this is as a level site model. So level site model has advantages uh, uh, work, uh, to, uh, against uh, other like uh, you know string method or cell method. This method is extremely useful to uh, modeling the surface, which has a sharp you know variation like a, a spark and a cusp. Uh, if uh, so. If, so, uh, so it can uh, accurately uh, modeling the evolutions of ion beam. So, with this two approach, you know, we uh, we have uh, fabricated several structures uh, in order to demonstrate the effectiveness of this approach. So, this is the uh, nano uh, nano dot uh, uh, nano dot generated by ion beam, and also uh, this is the nano uh, you know. Uh, Inverse of the nano dots, and we have used uh, sorry, there's no uh, we have used the you know, platinum uh, deposition uh, to protect uh, uh, these uh, nano dots, and the same thing. Uh, this is the sinusoidal nano structures also fabricated by FIB approach, and we deposit platinum to protect uh, the structures, and then we do a cross section. So this uh, uh, this uh, cross section showing. Uh, our simulation approach can um, pr relatively, you know, predict the generated, uh, you know, uh, the surface generated uh, form of the uh, nano uh, nano dot structure, and uh, also uh, with this divergence compensation, we see uh, the approach is very uh, uh, can uh, is very close to the designed geometries if we uh, counterbalance since. Uh, uh, beam skirt, you know, uh, effect overlap of uh, beams, uh, beam uh, effect. So with the accuracy about uh, you know uh, nine nanometer, and we apply this approach to fabricate uh, optical uh, fibers. Uh, this uh, <coughs> this uh, forty five degree uh, mirrors and uh, as uh, optical fiber, you know, a sensor uh, to get. Uh, to get you know a high resolution uh, readout, and also uh, as I said, you know we want to uh, uh, scale up uh, FIB uh, processing uh, in larger scales. Uh, our approach is to fabricate uh, the nano structure on diamond two, and then using uh, arch precision diamond turning process to scale up the approach. But to fabricate a nano structure on diamond is quite a challenge because the diamond. Is a kind of dielectric materials, and due to charging, uh, the beam will uh, drift. Uh, won't uh, so basically, iron is won't uh, bombard the right uh, uh, right part. Another is the ripple effect. You know, as you see, this is kind of reflect the surface, not smooth. Other like uh, reinterpretation uh, and beam skirt effect, which I already explained. But with the approach we developed. Uh, 
and uh, through some uh, sample preparations using low current, we are able to generate uh, accurate nanostructure on a tape of a single crystal diamond, uh, diamond two. So these are the 100 nanometer uh, weight uh, nanostructures. And through uh, traditional arch precision diamond turning, we would uh, generate nanostructures in a larger size. And this is a cross section of the nanograting demonstrate the process is very accurate. So basically, uh, this is uh, determinate the determinate uh, FIB um, nanofabrication approach. Uh, FIB uh, can also uh, you'll be uh, used to fabricate uh, some you know, uh, free uh, standing nanostructures, which uh, cannot be fabricated by other uh, fabrication approach. I just showing uh, how we uh, did it. Uh, so basically, uh, this is through some ion bombardment. We need to create a metallic, uh, self-supporting metallic cantilever. So this is showing the fabrication pro, uh, uh, process. So basically, uh, firstly, we uh, uh, we prepare some soap sol uh, solution and then immerse glass uh, slides into soap. And uh, when we take out uh, the glass slides and make it dry, it will get uh, some, you know, uh, lay uh, a, a film of soap on top of the glass slides. And then we put these glass slides into a uh, thermal evaporator. Uh, through thermal evaporation, we can coat uh, a thin layer in, in uh, three, so, uh, three or four hundreds uh, nanometer thin layer, you know, uh, metallic film. In this case, it's uh, a gold uh, layer. And then we immersed. Uh, uh, this unit into a water, so basically the soap will be dissolved and uh, uh, so we can remove the glass slides and then we will get a, a self-floating a uh, metallic uh, a film. On a separate cases, we use ion beam to generate some uh, uh, groove structures on silicon and then we, uh, we move the a uh, metallic uh, uh, thin film on top of uh, silicon, it will generate this kind of you know, self-supporting metallic uh, cantilever. And to generate overhanging structure, uh, firstly, we use ion beam to cut uh, this uh, uh, metallic uh, thin film, and uh, then we bombard the ion to the basement uh, base of the uh, cantilever. Uh, during the bombardment, we see the uh, cantilever uh, will bend towards to uh, towards to the uh, uh, iron uh, bombard uh, point. Uh, so this is through due to the uh, unbalanced uh, uh, the, the stress within the beam, and also the recrystallization of uh, of the, uh, you know, the of the top layer of the structure. You see the uh, beam uh, is bending until to uh, over uh, 90 degree. And uh, then we stop uh, bending uh, through uh, some you know, elastic uh, recovery. We will get uh, like, uh, you know, almost 90, 90 degree uh, overhanging, you know, uh, kind of structures. So which I already explained uh, this mechanism. I want uh, is through a beam bending. With this approach, uh, we can, Generate uh, some overhanging structures, like uh, you know, which can have application as you know, a nano wow and a nano cantilever. Even with this approach, we can uh, deposit these overhanging structures on uh, other substrates. Also, we can use this approach to generate uh, a nano uh, nanoware, which can uh, have a potential applications uh, in nano electronics, uh, nano electronics, and uh, the. Uh, the iron, uh, but uh, also my researchers have studied the iron damage problem uh, and to see how the iron damage will influence uh, uh, mechanical uh, functions of the, uh, the nanostructure. So this is my conclusion. Uh, uh, so basically, uh, FIB is a useful tool to generate a 3D structure. We demonstrate we can uh, fabricate uh, accurate nanostructure and also the overhanging uh, hanging structure high structures. So uh, thanks for uh, listening. And these are my researchers who did this work.